Hi everybody, this is Julissa. Thank you so much for coming back to my channel. And if you're listening in the podcast, thank you so much for being here. It is Wednesday, July 12th, 2023. I'm here to speak about an incident that happened yesterday at a clinic, at a hospital, excuse me. And this is so shocking to me. But then, you know, once you start researching more and more about it, it kind of happens quite often, but it doesn't happen to the point where somebody dies, right? But in this incident, unfortunately, um, the the outcome was very sad because we lost a doctor yesterday, an orthopedic surgeon um, was shot yesterday by one of his patients, and his name is Benjamin, Dr. Benjamin Mock. Um, Excuse me as I'm reading this. So I'm here to speak about that. Here's the thing. People are saying on on TV how since the pandemic, we have seen these cases go, go out more and more. And let me just tell you something. I think anybody who goes and gets medical care, which is every human being, right? We all at some point in our lives need medical care, or we have a family member who is in need of medical care, who is at a nursing home, who anything, right? Who goes to the doctor often, right? People who are battling a disease or something, right? They have to see a doctor like every week or something. And we know, we see how offices operate, right? We see that a lot of these doctors are overworked. We see the the office politics in doctor's office is basically, if you're five minutes late, you're not going to be seen, but then they make you wait 45 minutes in order for you to see a doctor, right? Uh, it's just crazy. And it's, it's been like that for a while, right? I think what happened with the pandemic this became even worse because there were people who were not showing up for the job, right? And then besides the fact that people were afraid, you know, because of the pandemic and the whole thing, there were people who were not showing up for the job and doctors' workload was even higher, right? So you can only imagine. And let me tell you something, aside from this case and what happened, right, which I'm going to go into details um, shortly, I just wanted to say this. A lot of the times I feel like people don't speak about what goes on in a doctor's office. Well, how has this been allowed for so long that you show up, right, and like I said, if you're late, five minutes, they cancel your appointment, you need to reschedule, they don't care if you a lot of them right now, not every office, but they don't care if you travel far or you took a day off from work and because of traffic, you're kind of late. They'll cancel it and then they'll make you wait when you show up on time. You're like, I'm here 15 minutes early and then you wait in pain. It could be like a routine checkup or you're there because you're in pain and you still wait so long, right? And this has been like this for a long, long time to the to the point that people are so used to it, right? We all know when we go to the doctor's office, we're like, I don't even know what time I'm getting out of there, right? And let me show up 15 minutes early because I don't want them to cancel my appointment, right? We've been so accustomed to that. And it happens quite often. So we can understand when people are not being used to that type of service, they get angry, especially nothing when people are in pain there's a lot of people who are living their lives on a daily basis with physical pain emotional pain is a different thing it's something even bigger right but i'm saying when people are in physical pain to the point that they have to reach out you know they have to now perhaps lose their job right go to fmla lose their job now, begin this therapy session and continue with their appointments. And these are things that a lot of the times you get to that point either because you got hurt at work or you got into a car accident or something happened. But it's not normal for people to do that on a daily basis, right? So their lives is changing, right? Their lives is changing. They're getting used to this new system, right? The new customer service, and they're in pain on top of all of that. And then perhaps, you know, they're trying a new thing, you know, because doctors also, you have to understand, not every medication works the same on everybody, right? So a lot of the times you're in a trial fail, trial error type of um, momentum where, you know, 
take it for one week, come back and see how it works. If that's not giving you any any type of relief, come back in a week and we'll give you something else, right? Not a lot of people can deal with that and still be okay, even though they know that they're you know they're in pain and they need a solution. So frustration at a doctor's office is very is it's meant to happen. Do we want people to be shooting out? Of course not. I'm just saying, like, when it's almost like DMB, everybody gets frustrated with DMB. I don't know. Last time I was there, the process changed. But I'm saying, like, like I was in and out. But when it comes to doctor's office, which is something that we all need in our lives, doctor services, it's frustrating. It's frustrating. You are in pain. You want a relief, right? And a lot of the times people wait longer, you know, to go to the doctors. And when they go, it's because they're already to the top of their pain level. You know how they say, and let's go one to 10, how, how much are you hurting right now? And a lot of the times people wait. And then when they get there, they, they have to go through all these office things that happen at a doctor's office. So that's on top of feeling the physical pain, right? Which is absolutely by no means justifying what happened here, obviously. I'm just giving you kind of like an, a thing that I noticed a lot in doctor's offices a lot of the people don't, don't speak about, right? Have you ever gone to like a doctor's office and you're filling out paperwork and you hand it back and you feel like they some some of the front desk staff they're so rude they don't want to repeat themselves and then you forgot this page it's like okay like are you the receptionist really because you're so rude right so if they're already treating people like that the front imagine what could happen in the back you know um and because the workload of these doctors is over the top okay you see one thing i noticed I noticed one time I was in this youth, not youth group, but it, it was like a career group in town. And I noticed a lot of the people that were in that group were people in the medical field, right? And that's basically what they do. They go to the, to the, they go to, to work and after work, working so much, they go out and they drink. And I was thinking to myself, it, it, the way, I saw somebody speaking about it, and the way he said it, it's such a normal thing for them to do. And what happens, you know, people who drink, I don't drink, but I'm saying people who drink more than often is because they're trying to um, pacify it. I'm trying to think of the right word to say, you know, they have such a hard day, like having a drink. That's why people say that's the saying that they say, you know, you're having a bad day, go get a wine or something. I don't even know why people say that, but apparently that's a very common thing that a lot of people in the medical field do. They go out to drink and they're overworked, okay? It has not changed. A lot of people after the whole pandemic and after going through the first and the second dose and the third dosage and the booster had developed in their lives in their physical life, a lot of issues. Nobody can deny that to me. People who went and got their first, second, third dose and booster, whatever, right? After a few months have developed a condition in their physical body that has led them to seek medical attention, that has led them to now begin a process of going to see a doctor quite often. It's in the statistics. You can see it. You know somebody near you who has been through that, and you know somebody um, in your workplace that has gone through the same ordeal. And then nobody wants to speak about that, right? But anyways, let's just get to the case, right? The sad news for today is this. A doctor was shot today, uh, yesterday, excuse me, in his office, in his operating room by one of his patients, right? And like I always say to you guys, life is unpredictable. One day we're here, the next day we don't know. So once again, as a Christ-believing person, I'm going to come here and tell you once again that do not neglect 
to get right with God, right? Do not neglect to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior because you don't know what could happen. Life is unpredictable. And people can say, and say, no, I'll seek God when I'm older. I'll seek God when, when I'm married with my kids or something. Like, we take life for granted so often. Like, we go and get in our cars and, oh, I'll be right back, right? We we'll always say that. We don't know. And of course, nobody's going to go and be negative, right? Obviously, but I'm saying like anything can happen. This doctor, I'm sure he went to the office and he that's the last thing from his mind, right? That was the last thing he was thinking yesterday, but it happened. And again, it's the sad news for today is this orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Benjamin Mock, was killed in a shooting at the Campbell Clinic in Colorville, Tennessee on Tuesday, police say Tuesday, July 11, 2023. Lane called the incident an isolated targeted attack that happened in that clinic. And there was the gunman, I believe they say, was restrained within two minutes because they have security, which is great. That's another thing you don't see often in clinical places. Like I said, excuse me, like I said many, you know, when I started, I said, People, in, when they go see the doctor, a lot of the times, it's not just for routine. They are already frustrated because nobody wants to walk around in physical pain, right? There's a lot of people who are walking around with physical pain. And the last thing they want to hear, you got to wait 45 minutes to an hour to see a doctor. Or they got to say, oh, you came into your appointment, your appointment got canceled. That's the last thing. So these are triggers that can make people react um, a, into a violent uh, ordeal, right? And I wish sometimes that we could see more and more security um, being put out there in, um, in medical offices. I wish we need that, especially these days. People are dealing with very hard, difficult things. Their lives are changing. Like I said, People who got their first, second dosage and the booster, you know, I don't know how many people were willing to take, but they have developed conditions that now make them, you know, go to work in physical pain. Raise a family having still physical pain. So that's already a big deal, right? So let me continue to read. So the... This um, gunman was restrained within two minutes, which is good. So it was an isolated incident, but they, we did lose Dr. Benjamin Mock. And it's just so sad, you know. Um, let me continue to read to you guys here. Um, the cover, color, I uh, might be pronoun mispronouncing that word, color, color bill, police department said they have not known Prior incidents with Pickens, that's the name of the suspect. Um, and he was shot. What's the name of the killer? I'm trying to find his name. His name is Larry Pickens, right? So Dr. Benjamin Mock, he was just 43 years old. And the shooter, his name is Larry Pickens, 29 years old. And this happened around 2.30 p.m. yesterday, July 11, 2023. And Pickens, he actually shot the doctor and fled the clinic, and he was uh, in custody within five minutes. So I'm glad that they had police available, ready available in that clinic or in the outside. So they saw him leave, and they got him right away. And it's just so sad, you know. Um, it says here, the a witness at the scene said that a patient has been training mock for the past week prior to the attack. The Lane sent to say press that authorities were weren't aware of any threats made prior to the shooting. So okay, so now they're saying that this was already announced that he was gonna do something like this. So come on, if like I didn't I just found out out just now, like if somebody's training you and you're in the medical field and you know who that guy is, like people these days announce what they're going to do. Have you ever seen those people? You, you see, I, um, I watch 48 hours a lot. Um, and there's, you know, if you're 
more than welcome to watch on Saturday. I think that comes on. But we, we go on Twitter, and I communicate a lot with the viewers live, right, on Twitter on Saturday nights. So you hear a lot of these episodes and a lot of these cases where it's basically, oh, you know, my husband threatened to to shoot me, or the victim said, you know, if anything happens to me, rest assured it's my husband because he had threatened me many times, and rest assured that's how they usually end up. People tend to announce what they're going to do. So now they're saying there was a witness that had been threatening the doctor many times before prior to the shooting. So like, hello, I think doctors definitely need protection. Like I said before, before, you know, like I said in the beginning, medical field is a trial and error type of ordeal. Not everything is going to work the same on everybody. And this is why I couldn't understand when the first and first and second dosage came out. I'm like, they're giving this to even babies. They're giving this to everybody. Like, nothing works like that 100% on people, on everybody. Right? Um, there are people who you say, and I, say, I have said this many times, uh, people say, oh, I have a headache. I always say, you know, take two a leaf. That's, you know, basically what I do. And then they're like, I took to a leaf, I, my headache is worse or something. Well, who am I to be giving medical advice? I'm, I'm laughing because we think, you know, I'm trying to resolve your problem. This is what has worked for me. Doesn't mean that it's gonna work the same for somebody else, right? So it's a trial, trial and error type, type of ordeal. So when you are in pain and you are frustrated and the doctor say, take this for five, five days, if it doesn't work, come back to the office or give me a call and these people are already in pain and they take it for five days and it doesn't work who you think they're gonna get mad at it has to be somebody who is very known i i don't know what to how to call it somebody who knows that this is how, how things usually work you know a lot of the time doctors say we'll give this a try and see if it works you know they're really they're we can look at statistics and say, you know, 85% of people take took this and they lower their blood pressure or whatever it could be, right? That doesn't mean that, that you 86% is going to work for them, right? But you you, won't, you only know after you try, right? It's a trial and error type of thing. So the reason is that a lot of the times, not a lot of people understand that. It's not like they're gonna give you magic pill and you're gonna be, oh, I feel great just now. A lot of the times it happens because some people might, might, it might work better for others, it might not, right? So I don't have all the details on this case, but this guy was already threatening about the doctor. So I'm sure this was not his first appointment. It's not like he was, he showed up on time, the doctor took an hour to see him and he's like, I'm done with him. Let me, you know, I don't want to wait this long. He's disrespecting my time, forget it. Let me, you know, shoot him or something, right? So let me continue to read to you guys over here. It says here, a witness said that a patient has been training Mark for the past week prior to the attack. Dolan said to step up they were not aware of any threats. Collierville Police Department said they have not known prior incidents with Pickens, but investigators are looking into whether any outside agency prior, had prior run in with him. That's the other thing too, right? So now they're looking, they're doing the investigation, trying to see, man, this guy to be reacting like that is not normal behavior, right? Number one, for people, patients to show up, you know, because you treat your doctor, you know, if you're mad at your doctor, there's so many options, right? You can either report the doctor, right? Because you already know their first and last name by that time. You, you're you like, I don't like how you're speaking with me. So you can do any report through with the clinic or hospital, do a, an incident report and ask for a supervisor because every office has a supervisor, right? Or, you know, send an email to the director of the clinic or the president of the hospital, whatever it could be, right? So you have option. If something is not going right in your medical care, you can send a complaint. If the complaint doesn't do any, anything, then you can go to the state. It, do you have option? Or 
by that time, then eventually what you end up doing, looking for it, well, a different doctor, right? If it's not working. So that behavior to lose it like that and kill somebody is just not a normal behavior. So what triggered this guy to do something like that? Because we treat doctors like, man, this guy is going to, you know, it's going to bring healing to me. He's going to make me feel better and he's going to do the best, right? I think what happened here? I wonder what happened, what triggered him to do that. So they're saying the investigation is that they're going to see if uh, his name was Larry, right? Uh, Larry Pickens, 29 years old, had other type of incidents with other local agencies because man people know you know fa- i said before in one previous epi- previous episode i said familiarity can either it could be a good thing it could be a bad thing to be honest because i'm laughing um because um in your town and in the areas where you like are known right the, the frequent places people notice okay they notice your behavior i work in retail for a long time right and i remember (laughs) there was that customer that comes and people will leave like my cashiers i never did cashiering because i used to always be in charge of dressing mannequins and things like that but i will see how immediately we'll see a customer come in and because of their past behavior with other staff, I will see my colleague leave the register. <laughs> they will be like immediate. I'm laughing because it's funny, right? This this case is very serious, but you will see it. It will it will be like an instant. That customer will show up, and people will leave their registers and be like, "Oh, I'm on break now. Oh, I'm gonna go to the back and do something. I gotta go and find something." Because they didn't want to do deal with that person again, right? They remember how that person was, right? Bad behavior at a restaurant, at a retail store, at a doctor's office is not forgetful to the people who work there. We re, like we will we're gonna remember you. Sometimes I don't understand how people they go to fast food places, to restaurants and things like that, and they wanna be like. Who was the one who took my order? I'm going to talk to them and they, and I'm going to wait for you. So like, if this is your local restaurant, you better forget to even come back. Because because of your behavior, we are not familiar with who you are. So we will not be want to be serving you, right? And unfortunately, people don't get that, right? And they keep doing it over and over again. It's always that. It's it's usually the same customers that get mad, right? The same behavior, the same attitude. Why didn't you not take my coupon? You know, and they want to keep going to the same store and and do the same thing, right? So it's a repeated behavior in this case. But it's just um, interesting that I remember that people get familiar with you. That's what I'm saying. People get familiarity can be a good thing and it can also be a bad thing the good thing is like um you know i'm trying to relaunch my julissa designs brands you can see back there right so i'm trying to relaunch and people who already know who what i do and things like that but it's a different city now so i'm gonna see now how my the people that know me, the, how my familiar, familiarity here in this new city is going to help me out with my brand, right? Because in my previous city, it didn't do so good, right? Because people know you and they cannot detach the two. It's almost like what they say to Jesus, isn't this the carpenter's son? And now we got to look at him as a king. People can never detach. When they're familiar with you, they can never detach your job from your purpose. They can never detach the two. They're going to see you want uh, as one thing. You're the carpenter. What are you doing here doing miracles, right? So they won't, some people will never accept that you have a purpose, which is different than what your trade is, right? So we'll see how it goes. But I'm saying familiarity um, can either advance you or, or you know hold you back because 
people have it engraved. It's almost like that customer. She will show up and people will be like, oh, I'm taking my break now. I don't wanna, I don't wanna deal with her. Like, nah, they won't say it. They're not gonna say it, right? But you can see the reason why everybody's disappearing from the register because because they don't want to deal with that customer again, right? Or with that patient, I guess you can say. Um, so this is to end this episode, which I'm almost running out of time, by the way. Um, the sad thing about this is, right? Doctor uh, Mock left yesterday his home doing his regular thing, just doing what he probably loved to do. He was an orthopedic surgeon. The last thing he's probably expected was to get uh, killed by one of his patients. There he is doing what he would normally do, trying to, you know, to do his job and probably had a whole plan for this patient, what he was going to do with him, what he was going to, you know, try out nets or it could be so many things. I know, you know, the doctors, when they walk in the room, they already have like your chart, your name, they know what's going on with you. And it's so sad that he lost his life like this, right? Um, this is what society is right now. This guy, Larry Pickens, 29 years old, now he's facing life in prison. And I don't even know like what to say like, like that, right? What did you gain by doing something like that to somebody else? What, what do you l- learn from that, right? So let's keep the family in prayer for both of them. I think everybody loses this here. Uh, everybody lose here, um, lose something here. It's just so sad. And like I said to everybody, you know, always seek the Lord. You never know when your time is going to be up, right? Um, I mean, not like that, but I'm saying like, you don't, you just never know like what could happen. So why put away, why put aside getting right with God, which is the most important thing, right? It, you know, seeking Jesus, like asking Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. If anybody out there listening to this or watching on YouTube, if you want, you need prayer, you want, you need prayer, you want to know what is this Jesus who I'm speaking about, please email me, julissa, julissadescents.com. Thank you so much, everybody, for being here. Thank you for subscribing and listening in the podcast. Have a good day, everybody. God bless.